Sure. Yeah. Okay. Part two of chapter 22 of the book God dictated to me as he dictated the Torah to Moses. And as he dictated in all the books of the prophets to the particular prophet name. Isaiah wrote Isaiah. Malachi wrote Malachi for God's, at God's dictation. His command and direction. As a matter of fact, all of the Hebrew Bible, even the writings, he had some man write those. The entire book is God's, the Hebrew Bible. Okay, I'm picking back up with my commentary of Rabbi Singer's commentary. A guilt offering is a sacrifice. It was distinct from the biblical sin offering. The transgressor furnished an unblemished ram. The Jews of the Holocaust, we can safely say, were not unblemished and sinless uh, rams. Men who... Tovia Singer decided were rams <laughs> to use Leviticus because of a faulty interpretation of Hebrew to English. I guess that's one. For sacrifice at the temple in Jerusalem, not the death camps of Germany, Auschwitz, etc. As well in cases of sins against holy items. What would be the purpose in a guilt offering in context of, of <laughs> I guess, the Jewish people in the Holocaust? Or, or even for, for what, what reason would this be? <laughs> it describes his representation, the leper scholar, your sages got it. And I guess early rabbis. Okay, holy items. Sins against holy items, theft, the commission of fraud or false oaths with monetary compensation to the victims for their loss. Plus a markup of 20% of the value to cover the priest's earnings. And he offered an unblemished ram. The Jewish people murdered in the Holocaust had not made any unintentional transgressions against Hitler and did not make monetary compensation to Hitler. If they did, it is the people of Israel that... Oh, if they did. It is the people of Israel that makes themselves an offering for guilt in Rabbi Singer's analysis. Though he seems to be saying Hitler made a guilt offering to God of blemished rams who are the Jewish people. If the people of Israel are the righteous servant, how are they also the animal to be sacrificed as a guilt offering? Rabbi Singer says, the guilt offering is a fire offering in which all the parts are to go up in smoke and the highs belong to the one making the offering. Notice he doesn't tell you this is a compensatory offering for theft and fraud, destruction of holy items. Again, what would the purpose be in that? I mentioned before that during the Holocaust, Hitler not only burned Jews in the ovens of Auschwitz, but he also used their skins as lampshades and their hair as stuffing for pillows. He sacrificed these people on the altars of ovens and kept their hides as his portion. Okay, the righteous servant, verse uh, 11 or 12, I think it's 11. He receives the many as his portion. The many are the many made righteous. And as his spoil, the multitude. But now he has Hitler receiving a portion. That's why I can't tell. Is he saying Hitler's the righteous servant? Because he's the one that receives the portion. And no, it's not lampshades made of Jewish skin. Hopefully it's donations from the many and the multitude so I can continue to teach this book 
and 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 have people in God's presence. Wherever I am, God's presence will fill the room, along with the presence of the angel of His presence, the Holy Spirit. The difference in any room with people sitting in it, while I speak, is that that presence would surround every single human being in there. But with me, that presence flows through me. It doesn't surround me. It goes through me. I have literally have become part of the Shekinah my spirit has. And so does every man in divine day. All of the prophets, Moses, David, you can find references to them being men in divine beings if you know how to read the Bible as I do. And of course, I was taught by God. Again, Rabbi Singer seems to be saying that Hitler is the man of Isaiah 53 who makes, this is God's writing now, that was me knowing what, already knowing what he wrote. Is saying Hitler is the man of Isaiah 53 who makes an offer of Israel as a Leviticus ram guilt offering and receives as his portion their hides. In Isaiah 53 12, God's righteous servant is given the many, oh, it is 12, as his portion in the multitude as his spoil. This would be those people who believed in him. They come back to Judaism and righteousness. They're witnesses of the first six verses. His portion is not the eyes of the people of Israel. Isaiah 53, 12 also says, God's righteous servant is exposed to death. He is exposed to death by the disease that God afflicted him with. But is given long life to make the many righteous. Exposed to death is not death. Is oh is near death, though he does not die as the victims of the Holocaust did. I've been exposed to death four times, and the last one was when I was crushed with lung cancer, stage four, untreatable. Twenty-two years ago, given one month to live. No treatment. They showed me the pictures. My lungs. White spots everywhere. Since then, I hadn't really seen a doctor, but I did go in to get some x-rays of my chest. Guess what? No white spots. The God of Israel removed them. And I say, well, he should, since he put them there. <laughs> but uh, that's just a joke between us. It wasn't fun. Have <laughs> to be careful of God. You never know when he's going to slam you to the ground in maltreatment. No, he slammed me to the ground many times. I think that's why Ezekiel had to be kept told and keep being told. So he could get up on your feet. It's because he's unconscious laying on the ground. He's done it to me on cement many times. Busting my chin open, wounded, cracking my skull. I got. There's a nerve in here that is shot. It's all numb. And the angel calls me numb skull sometimes. But he's laughing when he says it. it well, when God's rubbing it for me, he controls these hands. He'll do that. It's just to bother me. It's the fire refining. It changes your emotions. You, you get to where nothing bothers you. And he says, you're going to need that in Israel. Because you're not going to have all of Israel walking into the Torah. As they teach, he said, it's going to be a lot of people who are observant, who just can't believe what, that it's happening. They can't believe, really believe what they say that they believe. You're never going to get a greater evidence of being set before you. And you should be expected. Nobody seems to know when the day of the Lord is. It's so simple. All you got to do is go to Jer Jeremiah 31, which was written for the Roman dispersal. Who had returned? God said all along, all you had to do is return. You don't have to be sinless. You don't have to try to guess and do number things to figure out what year I'll come, this and that. No, y'all come back, I'll come back. Make the land bloom again. That's what I said, 31, 29, I think, or 30. Um, 
rebuild Jerusalem and restore the ruined cities. And then I'll make this new covenant with you. New covenant, where will we find it? Malachi 3. It's the only place you can find it. That's when he announces the day of the Lord. Well, the dispersal has come back. They created Israel in 1948. The land does bloom again. Ruined cities restored. Tel Aviv, Jaffa, etc., etc. Jerusalem, major metropolitan area in there. Been rebuilt. It's the day of the Lord. Well, they don't teach it. They teach a Messianic era that comes when Moshe comes. Well, Moshe's here. Anti-Semitism's up. And the sinning and evil people of this world are still here. And it's the day of the Lord. So, you go with what's on these, what's in God's book from God that I'm repeating on video, chapter by chapter, which I enjoyed doing. <laughs> it was better than writing it. He can irritate you so much, especially early on in the fire, and still today. But uh, I got—I was so mad at him. I think he deleted some pages I tied. Just took my hand, my hand, and hit the delete. And it blew it out first. I got up, I grabbed the computer, and I said, it's going out the window. I'm going to destroy this computer. And I went like this. I don't think I'd have really done it. But <laughs> his power. I can't do anything. I don't, not only do I not have self-thought, it still seems like my thinking, but I know he controls it and what I speak. No self-will. I know better than to ask for anything. I, I don't know what's going to happen next until it happens. And sometimes they, just, they never stop talking. But really, God doesn't talk that much, but the angel can talk as though he's God. He can make me think that's coming from God. Or sometimes he'll just use me. I've had a conversation with me. God using me to say God's words and me answering in my words. It takes some getting used to it. I mean, there's a lot more to this fire refinement than meets the eye. Uh, and our communication is uh, uncanny. He can put, he, I can have conversations with him and never hear a word. He just puts the knowledge of him answering my statement into my mind without verbally, or what seems like verbally, saying it. We call that knowing. It just puts a knowing in my mind. God created an animal sacrificial atonement worship system of laws for a primitive, illiterate people to learn what sin repentance, atonement, and worship are. And just as important, God says, and to cook their food. And eat, eating, eating animals raw was still going on in the time of Solomon. There's a good story on that. His soldiers just won a battle, and he went down there to the battlefield and saw his soldiers uh, killing uh, bulls. And eating them wrong. He told me, he ran down there, stop. Bring your bulls up to my camp tonight. I'm going to build an altar for God. <laughs> he commanded the Jewish people not to sacrifice their children and told them he no longer wanted their sacrifices through his prophet. Now, Toby has gone to the Torah. Now, he's revived God's laws. And I know for a fact, God didn't tell him to revive his laws. And he added human beings to it. That's adding to the Torah and taking from the Torah at the same time. A commandment of God that that not be done. And apparently, Toby, a singer, doesn't think it applies to him. Well, he's not going to see the scroll of remembrance. And he, and he is not going to the Jewish heaven. And as he comes correct, as we say, he's got a lot of correcting to do. God says, thus saith the Lord. If he thinks he's in God's good graces, 
or that God loves him or something like that for all his work as an anti-missionary. He's got another thing coming. There's one person you don't make angry because he stay angry, and that's God. Him and you for Judaism. Kravitz and Scobat at all. The whole organization is part of it as far as he's concerned. I'm assuming they're all Jewish. The lesson, lessons of this teaching tool of the Animal Atonement Worship Sacrificial Laws of the Torah were concluded. God never says these laws are to be applied to human beings substituted for animals. The part of verse 10 of Isaiah 53, that if he made himself an offering for guilt, is interpreted by Rabbi Singer to be actually, literally, translated as guilt offering. And that a guilt offering is defined in Leviticus chapter 7. Now let's go there. That's just shocking to me. But he thinks he knows, he acts like he knows everything. To me, he's a pompous ass. Tell him I said so. Tell him righteous servant Moshe, the prophet like Moses and Elijah said it. And God controls his words. So that's basically coming from God. <laughs> and that's God who just did that with my head. The translation of the Hebrew Bible by the Jewish Publication Society begun in 1956 and concluded in 1985, the version I use. And God says it's the best translation from Hebrew to English on the market. Bar none. The translation of the Hebrew Bible by the Jewish Publication Society was select academic professors on linguistics for the task who spent 30 years of their lives creating a completely new English translation of the Hebrew Bible from, from scratch from the Leningrad Codex the oldest Bible, Hebrew Bible in existence. To be, they, they say the Hebrew in that verse means made himself an offering for guilt. I'll take these fellows over Toby as singer. The righteous servant is a man, not an animal. Well, why do I read this commentary? How can I respect what he says and does? I once did. I learned actually a lot from him early on. God would even have me uh, listen to his radio show sometimes. And it's funny. He said in that radio show one time, God had me listen to a particular show, that he felt God was going to have to have total control of Moshe. He got something right. Absolute and total control of me. I'm like a puppet out here. Really. I mean, he controls my thoughts, my words, my body. Surrounding the cords of his power. So, <clears throat> when an interpretation conflicts with God's teachings and laws, you look to what is wrong with the interpretation. Not to what is going wrong with God, <laughs> something is wrong with God's teachings and laws, adding to them or taking from them. Rabbi Singer's interpretation does not fit Isaiah 53.10. Who receives a long life? It is not the murder of the Jewish people, and it is not Hitler. No one. Would God accept an animal sacrifice of blemished humans from the Gentile Hitler? No. He won't accept any human sacrifice, and he doesn't commit human sacrifice. Were the victims of the Holocaust crushed with disease? No. That if they made themselves an offering for guilt, they would receive long life and see their children? Of course not. No. 
Of the six million murdered Jews of the Holocaust, all the Jewish people gathered as one man Israel. No. Did God murder six million Jews to drive the Jews back to the promised land? Absolutely not. And he's offended by that, by the way. Have the Jewish people as one man made the many and a multitude righteous with their knowledge? Of course not. Certainly not the six million murdered in the Holocaust. The people of Israel are not God's righteous servant. I am. Moshiach, prophet like Moses, Elijah, and the man described in 53 are all for a time to come. Four righteous servants, one description, implicitly and explicitly, and one description which covers my life and me. I fit the verses that we've gotten through. There's still a couple. Um, So I'm all for Day of the Lord. Six prophecies unfulfilled. One of them is the coming, the time to come of the four righteous servants. And two covenants to be delivered. Of course he's got to have his prophet like Moses and Day of the Lord. That's when the covenant of sin forgiveness comes. I mean, who do you think the angel of the covenant is that you desire? Well, if a covenant is going to be delivered, don't you think he... This is when we're going to find the prophet like Moses also? Tokyo Singer says it's Joshua. I've already covered it, but that's ridiculous. What is unique about Moses is that God dictated the Torah to him. God has dictated two books to me of knowledge. Well, this book, Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord, that I could not possibly have. Okay, next up. Righteous servant versus Israel being Israel in Isaiah 53. Jews for Judaism. Exaltation. Uh, I just told you what I thought about the commentary of Toby a Singer of Outreach Judaism. And uh, doesn't get it. If you found that entertaining, you're going to love this one. Uh, it's chapter 24. And I'm going to have to read. We, we've passed over 20. I, and I don't know how that one happened. But we've intentionally passed over 22. Which is in Isaiah 53. Geared to show that Jesus doesn't fit any of the verses or the purpose. And of course it describes a Gentile. as in the Hebrew Bible. Didn't know how to read it. And... Uh, Jesus is a Jew. He can't be the man of 53, and he's most certainly not the man of Isaiah 11, the anointed one. Messiah. Or as the Jewish people say, Moshe. Can't be Messiah. Can't be Moshe. Can't be the righteous servant. <coughs> That's fine with me. <laughs> 